Let's start, everyone. Um, it is five o'clock. I like to start on time. So, uh, hi, I'm Dale Jardine. Um, uh, this is my second class. I, cla I, I, cla I uh, taught on Friday um, um, the class on painting wood. Um, it's all about the wood is what the title was. Um, it's th actually very much linked because I think where I got the practice for doing all the wood was all the first stuff and all the plaster that I cast. So definitely um, a lot of, of overlap between the two. Um, a little bit about me. I did post on the, the, my, the Discord channel. So if you haven't checked Discord, I do have a little bit of history there. I'm just, I'm not going to go through as in depth of what I wrote on there. Um, but basically I've been in the collecting since for about 40 years now, started in, in grade eight, and got my first big and I'm a collector. So I, I, I started collecting from that point and kept going. Um, uh, I'm a, I'm a volunteer manager, um, uh, for the last 21 years. Um, right now I'm working for victim services. So kind of go out on scene. I, I send volunteers out on scene after sudden death. Um, I'm a father of twins. My girls are 14 right now. So they're kind of into, they get to, they watch Reaper Live as well once in a while. Um, and been and married for 23. Um, so, uh, my first, first start, um, I, I've gone to Gen Con seven times and my first exposure to her start was at Gen Con, saw these molds and I think four of my buddies, we split on three molds. Um, and then when we got home, we basically bought the materials and then we kind of shared it around and it didn't, didn't go gung ho to start with. And so we kind of, um, it, spattered in it, but I eventually started getting a little bit more, uh, deeper into it. Um, and I've never really looked back after I'm trying to think how many, what year it took before I just really started to go. Um, but now I have probably got over 50 first molds. Um, I've been looking at some of the other companies, um, and how they can really support, um, kind of my, the figs and the D and D I'm playing. And, and, um, I, I'm very much the fantasy side of things. I have tried, I had a couple of the first, uh, sci-fi ones and built those as well. Um, but it just wasn't my thing. Um, but definitely good quality, all those stuff's good quality. Um, and, um, yeah, I just haven't really looked back. I've, I've got all this stuff and I, and I love it. Um, and, um, and we're going to go through that today. Um, just to remind, first, uh, I, I am a Jay Slugger on, uh, on Twitch. So you may see me, I, I kind of am a diehard uh, Reaper watcher. Um, I do uh, Twitch stream as well, not tons. Um, I got my affiliate, but usually Thursday evenings, but my, March has been brutal for me because I work. Um, my training program right now is kind of hit my Thursdays. So, but I do basically will paint. I've done a couple of first things on, on my Twitch stream, but usually it's in the evening, kind of eight Eastern. Um, so I'm there. I'm jumping slug on um, Instagram um, if you're interested in following me there. Um, but again, it's all a hobby to me. Uh, I'm still working full time. Um, next, I just want to say thanks to Reaper. Like this has been amazing. Um, the community is amazing and um, being able to uh, teach and kind of share my hobby. Um, I, I, it, it's such a great community and just to hear everyone just say, you know, there's so many different ways to do things. Um, and so I absolutely um, uh, love this and, and Reaper's got uh, amazing customer support and their quality is great. And can't say much, uh, enough about them. I am a big uh, metal miniature figure collector. My collection has started since it started in the early days um, for 40 years. Um, and so I kind of lean towards that because the bulk of my figures are already lead. So or, or metal, uh, the old ones lead. So um, for today, um, we're going to keep the question answer up if you can. If you can answer through there, that's a lot easier to manage. Um, as we go through this, and I'll try to answer all the questions. Um, uh, and if I and I think uh, Paxson is here helping us today. Um, if he sees something in chat, um, he's going to um, try to maybe catch it. Or and again, make sure if you happen to do something in chat, do it to uh, all panelists and attendees, so we all see um, those things. But question and answer is definitely going to be the the best way to go today. We do have 90 minutes. Uh, my last one was an hour, and I think it. Kind of work. I think the 90 minute mark will be better um, just to get what I want to get covered today. I haven't taught this before, so I'm hoping my comp my I run well. Um, 90 minutes. Um, I normally when I teach, I teach about three hours, so I have no problem talking for a lot. So we'll see. Um, anyway, so the goals for today. Um, I want to um, 
kind of give you a little bit of my learning of what I've gone through in, in the 18 years of kind of collecting first. Um, kind of the tools, the cost uh, of, of if you're thinking of getting into this. Um, tutorial will actually, if you see my other screen here, I will highlight this and we will do a pour tonight. And I'm, I'm going to have to bump that early so that you can see the pour and it'll dry while we're in the middle of this and, and I can de will demold what I, what I cast um, from start to finish. So that was my goal. So that's going to happen fairly quickly. Um, I'll show you some kind of standard uses of first start and then some of the non-standard things that you're basically a lot of first or, or mold pieces that you make um, are just limited by your imagination. So, so I'll, I'll share some of the things that, that I've done um, that I've used and, and again, it may fire you up about the benefits of first. Um, and um, and then uh, that'll give maybe even suggest a good starting point. Maybe you said, you know what, I've been thinking about getting into to plaster casting. What should I start with? What am I going to get the most bang for my buck if I have a limited budget? I just want to start to see if I like it. So that kind of, that is the goal for today. So um, if there's any, any quick, quick questions before I start a pour, because we're going we're gonna to start right away. And I'll probably switch screens now too, um, so that I can spotlight replace this one this will be more likely that it's going to be easy to see so i don't see any questions coming up so we're going to start so i will get a, I, i'm just because i want to get this done i will kind of talk about the process as we go um so tools oh i forgot my scraper oh no, no i didn't all right thought i forgot my scraper downstairs normally i don't do this in my game my games room um, so things we need. Um, so if you can hear, I'm, I'm, this is actually um, a ceramic tile. Um, and what it's on is you can buy con, um, construction foam, um, um, sponge and I just don't take them out. Um, and this is kind of my, it's called a banger board. Um, and what I like is that I can actually really, I've got a lot of play with when I'm pouring stuff, if I happen to, uh, I, I can actually kind of move the plaster around without touching it. Um, uh, but they'll talk about a banger board where, where you're basically, early days, you could just do this on the side of your board and you're basically getting the bubbles to come up because bubbles is your bane in this hobby. Um, and you don't want bubbles sticking in there because it'll, if some of the fine, you'll lose some of the fine detail. So anyway, that's what I work. I like this piece of tile. Um, so you can get it at a hobby store, really cheap, not a hobby store, a, um, a hardware store, really cheap. I believe this cost me $2. Um, so cheap and the sponges are pretty cheap as well. So that's kind of my, my board. It's easy to scrape. You need a, you need a, a four or a six inch um, scraper. This has seen its day. I probably need a new one. Um, uh, it starts by most of these molds are about four inches. So this, so you can get a sense. Um, that's why that. I like the six a little wider. Can I actually go this way if I want? Um, what you'll find is with different molds, or maybe a little funny piece that um, that you want to go on a different angle when you're when you're you're wiping. Uh, and so I kind of I have both, uh, and so I, I will flip back and forth. The four the other benefit of the four inch one is that if you're packing this, like I I will sometimes have this completely full. Um, and so then the four inch will swipe in between them very nice. You are, we are swiping off liquid and so I can't really fill it more or it's going to start to drip off the side. Now I do it at a sink area and so it's not a big deal, but then I'm going to be scra uh, scraping off of my uh, cabinet top or whatever. Um, and so uh, I try to contain my mess, which you will see when we start to pour here, um, to, to my, my tile. Um, and so I think it's a good, uh, a good amount. Um, other things I got to boil. I start with I, I would use uh, uh, red solo cups, um, uh, but then um, I saw these on a, a dental website, a dental uh, supply website, um, and and absolutely love it. Um, I'll go into a little bit more of dental supply stuff when we talk about dent uh, the plasters. But um, so that that's my my advanced replacement. I do like it that I can kind of pinch it a little bit um, and allow me to kind of um, pour a little nicer. Um, I pre-cast um, um, my water and um, I pre-measured my, my, my um, 
plaster and my dental plaster, my Excalibur and water. Um, it's basically, in general, you can get a little bit more detailed, but I basically use little shot glasses and it's one, so I got three shots here in the water, six shots here. So you'll see that someone could get a little bit more precise with the exact, I think, um, each when you buy whatever you buy it'll say your exact ratio i find this works out really well and even some of the first um videos um will will it, it kind of let you you're kind of basically eyeballing how much water uh, how much powder you're putting into the water um which we, we can we'll do that this way um okay the other piece to remember you're going to need paper towel i almost have paper towel handy um, both for all my dry brushing I do. <laughs> like I said, we use basically this for a palette um, and then as well for scraping and wiping. Um, so you will definitely use lots of paper towel in this. So I'm gonna have that ready. Um, and then wet water or um, if you think of wet, uh, uh, jet dry, um, you want, what's the ratio? I've got this. I, I did write down the ratio uh, for jet dry. Jet dry is three drops for every two ounces of water. And what that is, it's, um, a, it will basically help um, the liquid get to all the um, areas of your mold. So I'm, I'm, I basically spray your mold with a little bit of this, a little bit of jet dries in there. And that's all I need to do. Normally I will shake it out. Um, in this case, I'll actually just kind of put it down on my paper towel that I've got here. Oh, there. That's all. And that, that, that means it's, it's ready. It's ready to go. Um, oops, sorry. I just want to make sure my question answers is still visible here. Um, okay. So we're going to get this moving because like I said, time is of an essence if we want to be able to demold this stuff. Um, and so I think you can all see this. So normally one of the ways to see how much you have and is that you're without measuring is that you're kind of putting in enough plaster, you're letting it settle, and you want enough plaster so that it, it you start to see it form above the water. See, if I leave it right now, you see it's still, it's now starting to come to the surface, but it's still completely covered. And so, um, but anyway, like I said, I've measured this so I know how much I want. But, but that's how sometimes you can, you can it's a hobby that really says that you, you can kind of guess. And so you'll see where, where we're at here is that we're starting to see just below the surface a fair amount. We're starting to see some area that isn't getting into the water. It means you've got the right amount. Um, and so now we're good. So we're just gonna, just using a plastic uh, um, uh, disposable uh, uh, spoon. Uh, you will eventually destroy that spoon just because it's going to get caked with this stuff and you're going to crack it off and eventually it starts to crack. Uh, but I usually, I want, you want to mix for about a minute, even though it may look mixed. Um, I, you just purposely keep going. You want to, you, I think you don't always see the kind of imperfection in the pour. And so you really want to go for about a minute. It, and, and, and basically you're getting, you should be getting a kind of a milkshake like texture. Um, and each of the different plasters will work a little, will be a little different. And so that's where I've stuck with Excalibur, uh, the dental plaster. Um, and so I think I know it quite well and I know what it does. I know I, I, I started with Hydrostone, um, um, and it, it was definitely different um, in terms of what the plaster does when we're done. All right, so that's probably quite good, probably more than I normally do. I'm probably a little lazy. Um, I like to pour kind of right in the middle of the mold first, just because it will get messy. We'll go over this one. Hoping I've got enough for this. I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't add the third one. Uh, I measured out the two, and then I. You, you, that's the other thing. You may not know exactly what will be enough um, until you've done it a few times. Sometimes I'll write 
I'll write on the side or I'll make little notes. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to not cast that last one. Um, okay. You can, like I missed a little bit there, but that's not going to take much. That's not going to take much. There was there one was more question. question. Oh, yeah, there is. Uh, uh, I did not see, no, no, sorry, sorry. I, I, I didn't um, send a PDF. I, I will um, send a link actually um, in, in the chat of kind of some of the companies that I've used. So I will send that out. You know, there wasn't a PDF. I kind of added this kind of last minute. I hadn't really planned on teaching this. Um, and so that's why I didn't, I put a lot more work in my other one. I didn't have PDF and I will next time I do this, um, I, I teach this, I'll, I'll definitely have a little bit more information so you can see and, but I, I'll definitely by the time I'm done, um, you'll, you'll, um, uh, you'll be fine with kind of the information I give you. And I think you'll, you'll, you'll have a good, a good um, a starting point. Um, like her start website's got so many things to learn. So I'm, I'm going to just mute for a second because this is my uh, back. My, uh, this is one of just a, a back massager. <laughs> and this, this is my, um, so I just do uh, you can see how loud that is. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute myself. And what I'd like you to do is just watch these molds as I, as I kind of vibrate this. So now old school, you just do this. Okay, and you can see right now the bubbles coming up. So those have been trapped on the side, okay. And so then, and you can do it that way. I started many years and I did it with a banger board and I just did this. I just kept doing this for as long as I could. And then I thought when well, it was good enough, um, sometimes you can use a toothpick if you know there's an area that you're finding with one piece that will always show a bubble or, or, or it gets a, a little bit air pocket gets trapped. Um, and so you can see that it's, it's right now starting there. I'm gonna quickly just mute for just one second and then watch again. Realize I probably muted the wrong. Yes, yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I muted. I've got two things going here. <laughs> Sorry about that. So anyway, you know what? For for the test, I, that'll be, that'll be fine. Okay. So now we want to start a timer. So now with um, yeah, I apologize about the noise. We want to go nine minutes from now. The longer I've played with the cat, the mold, um, the more. You've got to play around with the time, but this is going to start to hard. It is already starting to harden. You'll feel that you put the hand over. You'll actually start to feel it get warm. So it's a chemical process that's happening. You can't kind of re-grind down stuff that's been hardened. It it's only happens once, um, and so this is basically settling. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this. Um, what I can see, like on this. Uh, yeah. um, is you're, you're seeing the water is coming up, up through the mold and so it's settling the, the hardest cast, uh, uh, plaster is settling down and so that's why I like um, uh, uh, this little bit of extra so once I've kind of done a little bit of a, the, the vibro table or the um, I, I add a little bit on top and usually there's not many bubbles that are being added but that's why I like a little extra on top because now it's just going to add to the settling. And I think of it as kind of pressure down on your, um, your, on your mold. So we're going to wait now on this um, uh, for eight minutes. And while that's, that's before we scrape, um, let me go to a couple other points. I don't see any other questions. So I'll just keep going along what I want to talk about. Um, let's see here. All right, um, materials. So uh, I mentioned hydrostone. I started with hydrostone. Um, it's um, uh, 10,000 uh, PSI uh, for strength when it's done. Hydro, uh, this Excalibur dental plaster, which is probably the most expensive, um, is 18,000 PSI. And so it's the hardest of the materials. That's what I, I liked about it. Uh, the most commonly used when you think dental plaster is like when you get go to the dentist and you get your teeth um, done. Um, uh, yeah, yes, these are silicone molds. Yes. Um, um, anyway, so um, the uh, the whole dental industry is unregulated. So you can actually you find a dental supply company near you, 
Um, you can just register with them and they'll, and they'll send you stuff. So it's kind of cool to see all the dental stuff. Uh, that's out there. Um, I've tried a couple of different versions and I have not liked some of the other dental material. I found one of them was very grainy and I'm not sure what the dentists are using it for. Um, but um, I've stuck with Excalibur. Uh, again, it's the hardest material. And as a comparison, Plaster of Paris is 2000 PSI. So com no comparison, it, you can absolutely kind of break your Plaster of Paris. It'll be more crumbly, um, just not as good a quality. Sure, if you want to start with it, just to try, because it's the cheapest. Um, if you have one mold and you want to try um, something, um, sure, you could pro probably still have some success um, with it. Um, uh, but um, um, I would say um, I, I, I've never really even tried Plaster Paris for this, even though I knew it was available. I just went uh, from Hydrostone um, to dental plaster and I played with different colors of dental plaster uh, but I've really kind of stuck home with this which is pretty sort of white. Um, okay so that's hard. Any questions about hardness um, or material? I'll get into cost in a second. Well cost basically so for me um, it cost me about 70 bucks uh, um, US dollars. I'm a Canadian, so I kind of transferred it all. Uh, $70 for a 50 pound box. Um, and so that's a, that's a big box. It's got a lot, a lot of pores in it. And I would say each one of these pores is probably for me about 50 cents um, worth of material. Um, you can see it on the, some people which have bought them and kind of, um, kind of decided to sell, do the, the mold for four people and sell it. We'll sell it, you'll see it for like five bucks. Um, and so the cap, the time, the drying, the, the packaging and sending it out and they make a little bit of money on eBay that way. Um, and so I think it's still a fairly cheap and in, in, in inexpensive um, way to get dungeon blend, uh, dungeon walls. I, when I first bought my first Hydrostone uh, or the first molds at Gen Con, absolutely Dwarven Forge was there. It, I bought some too. Uh, a lot of their stuff is amazing too. The, it, I think it's very supplemental um, where there's some things that you just won't, won't have all the pieces. Her, uh, Her Start doesn't have all the pieces or, or some of the other companies out there don't have all the pieces. But at the same time, I find they didn't have a lot of what Hearst had. And so it is just about all these different options that we have to um, put together Dungeon Bling. We're at three minute mark, so we're still still waiting on this. Um, you can kind of see, you can see what what will happen because the, the there's a difference in the the lines here is the water's cooling on top here. Um, like right there, that's all water. And so that's the settling that's happening. And so you start to see a little bit of your mold coming through as it settles. So you know what's doing its work. You don't really have to do any more banging at that point. It's ready to it's ready to um, basically go. And actually what, what we'll do is after I, I, I scrape this, I'll put it aside. I've got two done that I did last night and, I, and we will actually de demold these as well. So I've got, I've got two ready to go um, and I will show you those in a minute. And so by the time we're done, you're going to see basically five different molds done. All right. So where I was I? Um, Merlin's Magic is another one. If you haven't heard of them, they're a company that's basically um, just building this whole plaster industry for the fantasy, all this calling it Merlin's Magic. Um, and there's like $68 for 50 pounds, so a little cheaper. It's a little different. I don't think the, the PSI was a little lower. I think that's 14,000 PSI, but definitely good enough for, for this material. Um, uh, you'll hear other works like Hydrocol, um, even cheaper. That's 25 bucks for, for um, a 50 pound box. So, so you can go somewhere, anywhere in between. If you're close to a gypsum mine, <laughs> yeah, this this stuff. I think the material, a lot of the, the cost on this material is actually the transport. So to get this stuff to Canada, it does add a lot of shipping cost. But I know, kind of southern United States, kind of Arkansas. I think I believe there's some gypsum mines there. Um, and if you're closer to um, some of these companies, um, you can um, get this a lot cheaper. And then compared to the plaster of Paris, you're going to go, hey, this is a lot better uh, quality for a very um, high PSI, and you may do that. And so for those that are um, uh, near a gypsum mine, I'm jealous. Um, 
I use perfect cast hardnesses between the two. I like storing some pieces, cast, cast, and perfect cast. Let's me do that. Gentle is very hard. Yeah, it, 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 and everyone will get to a certain fine. I have a no problem kind of cutting this and, and, and doing different things. But yeah, like I said, there's no right one way. Everyone will get kind of comfortable with um, a certain uh, material they like to use. I, like I said, I've been very comfortable with, with dental plaster. Um, and uh, absolutely, uh, I could someday change my mind because someone showed me something that I wasn't aware of. Um, but again, it's a fairly um, narrow field, I would say. So we think of uh, just, I haven't run into a lot of people collecting a lot of molds. Um, a few, there's another one guy in Toronto that owns a, one of the big game stores there and he did a pile of stuff. Um, and we chatted at one con that we went to and I saw him. Uh, but, but it's a fairly narrow field, so, uh, but absolutely I could learn. And, and by the way, Chris, if you can use the question answer, that it's a little easier because it'll stay up there and won't scroll away. Um, that's just, or even if you want to throw statements out there that, that you can add them to the, even if it's not a pure question. Um, and I'll try and comment on, even if you just have a comment that you want to say, uh, this is, I expect to be very interactive. So we're at the 21 minute mark. So I think we're going to get ready to um, scrape. Um, so one way to know um, is if you're, if you're just even, you can see that I can move this mold now and it's, it's holding its form. You know you're in good shape when you can do that. When I would have started to, um, right away, that wouldn't have done that. Um, and so oh, there's my timer. Sorry, just a minute. Um, absolutely, I've forgotten. So I absolutely love my phone and my timer on my phone because I've started watching Netflix and sitting here and then 20 minutes later, instead of nine minutes later, I've completely forgot to scrape and it's garbage at that point. I'm not, it's just, I completely forget. So I absolutely, a phone and a timer is, uh, I think, a mandatory piece of doing any type of casting because it is a very time specific. Um, and, and not within, it's not seconds. See, so I, I can still see this is in good shape. Um, and basically what we were looking for at this point is that I can scrape this and it, and it's, um, I'm going to have a nice clean mold. So it's not gotten too hard, but anyway, let's, let's do our first scraper. So I'm just going lightly, no pressure at all. Um, and you can see the water that's come off this. Because I'm at my um, desk, I'm going to try to clean up a little bit of this as we go. I'll probably go use a little bit more paper towel than I normally do. Normally I'll just let that completely um, harden on here. And it, it, even though it's all wet, it usually doesn't pour over the side um, and um, it'll all harden by the time we're done, no matter how much water is in there. Whoops, I'm now on my keyboard. All right, my G4 key, my default key is. I knew this would be a little messy. Anyway, let's go again. I got to no, so now what you're looking for, you're not maybe not getting it, but you can see a little bit of a, it bowed out. You really don't want your mold mold out, a bold, a bowed outwards because a lot of these pieces are going to fit together. It's actually better, concave is better because you're going to glue this together. So you're going to actually have um, something um, that's going to go in between it anyway. So this is where you're, you're kind of having a look at your mold and you really want flat even. Flat even is perfect. And so that second one really made that a little nicer. Going the opposite direction, I find going a couple different directions is nice. As I said, I got this wide one, so I could do this if I wanted. Um, sometimes the angle um, uh, changes how much it is taken um, off of your mold. Um, so sometimes I'll go flatter. Like this piece, if you'll see, some of these thin, thin pieces, when you scrape them, you'll, you'll pull out too much. Um, and so I'll sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of shovel a little bit in here like that uh, and then do another scrape and go a little lighter, hopefully that it's nice and flush, um, like so. You can see the, um, right when I do this, if you watch the water come apart because of the jet dry. That, so that's what's happening inside the mold. Uh, no questions there. Okay, I'm just making sure no one questions while I'm scraping. So that's basically what we need. Um, and everything is looking good to me. Um, and, other, and I haven't made that too much a giant mess. My keyboard's got a little bit, my desk got a little bit, but that's not too bad. I'm happy so far. 
and throw that out. And so we got it. This is now has got to sit. Okay. Uh, other thing, if you use a solo cup, you want to turn your solo cup upside down. If that hardens in there, um, the extra plaster, you you it, it will come harden, and you know, basically your solo cup is garbage. Um, if you flip it upside down on up the paper, usually the paper towel that I've used to dry or to scrape from. Um, if I flip it upside down, it'll come up enough, and I can usually then uh, work out the plaster. Um, also, if you're working in a sink, you do not want to flush this down your sink. It will, the, the sediment will um, start to fill up your sink over time. Um, yes, I, I would say my downstairs sink has got a bit in there, and I uh, once in a while flushed a bit and I extra water, um, but this sediment will harden and it would fill. So um, I would suggest be careful. And so mostly because this will all dry, you see, I'll keep, we'll come back to this and you'll see how hard and dry it gets that I just throw it in the garbage. There's no need to same with this, all this inside here, and they'll let it dry. It's all gonna be able to crack, it'll crack. It's actually kind of the fun part is to uh, um, the cracky stuff at the end and taking this apart and breaking it all up and it's fun. So um, same with the spoon. Um, the spoon, I crack a spoon and you'll eventually get, but they're disposable. So. Um, so anyway, that's what we've got. I'm gonna try and move this out of the way so that I can uh, come back to this. I've got my table here, so I should be able to move this and put it on my table. I'm trying to keep it very level. I did see a little bit of spill. I'm not sure where I spilled, but oh, we'll manage. Okay. Let's come to, I'm going to jump up to this piece that was, um, you know, Unmold these, uh, sorry, we demold these things. So we've got, um, oh yeah, here, before I, I start here, I'm going to, I did, I did make sure I could share links. I wasn't sure, um, but before I forget, I'm going to share this link with everybody. Everybody. There you go. Um, now I'll, I'll be talking about all those um, probably, or at least uh, it's a starting point for you. I'll, I'll actually talk about right now. So herstart.com, um, been going. He, he, his website never says when he started, but I know in 2002, he was still going. He was starting for a while. He still goes to this day, uh, Bruce Hurst, Hurst and his wife. Um, uh, one man show, uh, great customer service, uh, uh, amazing, and he designs all this stuff, and, and it's just amazing what he can do. Um, uh, and uh, so, uh, supports all all the information you need. I, I've called him on the phone and chatted with him. Um, it, uh, he, there, there's videos. There's um, how to build everything. There's plans for everything you buy. Uh, um, absolutely amazing website. Um, and there's uh, I, I know there was a new wooden log cabin that came out recently. So there's still stuff that's coming out new, um, which is cool. Um, and, and I looked at that and go, oh, I, because I'm in Canada, he has to use the USB, like the big box. He, I can basically get six molds for, it's kind of the most, to make it the most inexpensive, inexpensive for shipping. And so I usually wait till I want six. Um, and so, um, but anyway, that's one. Uh, the other link, uh, Four Bot Industry, a little bit more sci-fi-ish if you're thinking sci-fi, aliens. Um, uh, so I haven't bought any of theirs, but they've definitely been around for um, a long time. Uh, Lady Sable Designs. I'm on the verge of buying some of the kind of the, the floor accessories, the clothing, because I've been playing around with Sculpey, and I think I could do some press stuff into her stuff. Um, the fur, go, like kind of lying over to one of the bed, her beds things like that. I believe she's also a sculptor for Dwarven Forge now. Um, nothing new on her website for a while. I think it's been at least four years since I've seen anything new, but it's still up. I did check today. Uh, Merlin Magic, I just mentioned that as the supplier. And the Woodland Scenics, there's a couple, um, they're, they're not actually flat molds. They're molds that they press against some of their terrain. Um, and so, this, this is an example of uh, the same piece. But so what I did is I kind of made a support piece so that I could actually have these flat. And then I put them on there. And, and there's about 10 different rock outcroppings. So they weren't really made for this 
and it was different, but I bought them. They were really cheap. They were 10 bucks. Um, and, it, and then I got to do different types of rocks and, and textures. And, and um, so it was kind of fun. So that's just another kind of link. Um, if you're thinking about um, trying it, if you really want to reduce your price and want to try rock out crops, um, that, that'll be your cheapest, uh, just because their molds are probably the cheapest. They're black. They're not silicon. I'm not sure what they're made of. They're definitely a, um, a coarser material. I, did, I didn't bring it up. I should have brought mine up. Um, so, but I, I, I bought two of their um, molds and tried them, and, and, and they've been fun. Um, okay. So you can see that they dry nice. They're usually... The, the, the mess you're seeing is, is really, depending on where you're going to work on this, you'll get white specks everywhere. You can definitely vacuum this stuff up, but it'll, it'll all over the side. I tried to clean this up as much as I can. Um, and then basically this mold, you can easily just do this and pop these things out. Um, what normally is happening here is you're going to have a multi-level piece. He, he kind of sticks to this one inch mark for thickness. And so if he's going to have a piece that is, um, no, this isn't the dry one. I, I did these in last night. I wanted to show you a couple of them. So I cast a few last night. Um, and um, the other one, so I should keep track of my time actually for my other one. Uh, let's go. Normally you want to keep the other one for about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. And so since we're kind of, that's going to be in the middle. I'm going to go 30 and I'm going to start that and I'll show you. And if, if I screwed up by demolding it early, it's like, oh, well, it's garbage. But you actually can still salvage a lot of stuff. But anyway, so what I was saying for this um, piece, so even though it looks like it, it's a fairly small piece, um, these will, what he'll, Bruce has done is these stacks. So that stacks there. That stacks there. And so when this, so I didn't, um, this is just left in the mold since yesterday. It looks very dry. Um, um, that goes here. That goes here. That goes there. And even some of the complex ones, you'll see they actually have little letters on them. So they tell you where to put everything. And these, these pieces I love. Um, and uh, so another piece, what I've done, just because I've been doing this, I started I saying, hey, I wonder if I could do a table at a con and, and see if there, would anyone want some of my accessory pieces. Um, if you were in my woods, um, all about the wood, my, the wood texture, painting wood is very quick. And so with having all these barrels and, 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 and uh, different, different things from Hearst, um, I decided one day um, to try, actually my brother, who's an artist, he had a, a table at a con. I said, hey, put this on the corner of your table and see if, if someone wants any of these things. I go, I, I wasn't, it was just going to be for fun, some fun hobby money. Well, they flew out. Like, I'm not kidding. It almost all went. And it was just like, wow. And, and we were doing like three of these little pieces for five bucks. So, and, and so Hearst does have a license agreement that he doesn't mind you selling the work that you've made you're never ever allowed to re uh, sell mold that you've made but you could definitely sell the product um and, and i think it's up to two thousand dollars in profit a year before you have to start working with some licensing with him i only go to two cons a year um at that point i'm not making anywhere near that much money uh but it was enough that it was it was worth my time and day and to be able to chat with a bunch of people um so I started doing that. And so I go basically to two cons, Hot Lead, which is in Stratford, Ontario, and, um, and usually the Four City, which is or, uh, Comic Con, which is in London, um, are the two big cons. So anyway, so that mold turns into these things. So you can see um, they're really, they're nice. I really like the, this is a very much an old ruin it, with the pillars there. Gives you some options where you want to put them. You've got some built-in um, pillars in these pieces, and these are kind of old um, of stone walls that have that deteriorated. So absolutely love this one. I will when I get to the end. Um, I have this one completely painted several ways. You know, uh, lots of options to put in, kind of tough things in here. Um, the one thing I would say, so 
gluing this together, you're basically, I'm using construction glue, where to put my construction glue. So I'm just, I use, they're just using LePage wood glue. Um, you could use white glue. I like LePage, I think it's good. I've got a big tub of it. And you're basically um, putting it directly on. So, and then one thing, so you're gonna have seam lines. So obviously this has got a seam up here where I'm putting this. And so I kind of, I actually like a little extra glue so that one we can squeeze it together. So you've got glue coming out. I can just go across with my finger. And that whole process itself helps to cover um, that seam. This one, just with its built-in depression, it, it, you're not gonna see a seam uh, normally. It's this side that what I would most worry about. Um, but even your paint job, um, will um, help cover um, those, those seam lines, um, as well um, using clocking and other things like that. I, I, I definitely um, work on different ways to cover, cover up um, seam lines. And not to mention, so as someone mentioned earlier, kind of scoring or, or scraping. Um, and so this piece here, that another way would be actually to just go at it with something and actually just change the form a little bit, right? Like just take some, take the eye away from, from that seam line this way to give it another, oh sorry, let me zoom it in just a minute here. Um, just give it another um, line that will draw the eye away from your, your seam line on each one. And so same thing, I like the fact that I can work with this quite easily. Um, I, I'm just using, Kind of these you get these dental tools um, and they do uh, a, a nice job uh, but the same thing as well sandpaper um, I always have a high grade sandpaper I should have put that on my tools um, a high grit so this is a, a 60 grit sandpaper this this piece of sandpaper is over a year old um, what's nice also is that um, oh, sorry, I just pushed my my one glue point here here um, easily just scrape along this. What is nice is that sandpaper won't hold this plaster. I can just tap it from behind into the garbage and it's like brand new um, piece of sandpaper. I, I, I like doing that on, on a kind of flat table, a nice surface. And so that will make sure that the bottom um, is nice and smooth and flat. And so you can see there was a little bit uh, difference here where I could sand a little bit more. But in general, I find the base, like that's not wobbly at all. I don't have to do a ton of sanding on that. Um, and then not to mention what I like to do, sorry, let me grab that one, is I, I will actually put so that some um, Christmas ribbon, ribbon, ribboning, uh, ribboning. Um, and I actually cut to the bottom and I have a nice felt bottom to it. So, so that's another kind of a leveling piece. Um, that I do to all my pieces. Um, and so that's, that's the same one that I've done. I did a little bit of snow effect in there, even though I did a little bit of green in there. So you can see, you can't really see a nat the natural steam. You could there a little bit. I probably could have done something there. But unless I, I notice it more because I know where the seams are, someone that's picking this up for the first time may not see um, those seams. Okay, I'll get to some of those things in a bit. You have a few uh, questions. Okay. Oh, were you seeing the questions? Oh, they're not in the question answer? Oh, they're there. Oh, oh sorry. Hey, it, I, I, it disappeared. <laughs> okay, let's get to the questions here. Um, does that now feel dry and chalky, or is it like teeth texture? Teeth texture. Uh, this, what's well, not chalky, like, I wouldn't say chalky, like like nothing's coming off my on my finger. If that helps, you kind of decide it. it so this from yesterday, it, it's not powdery or anything. Um, that that is very hard. Um, uh, teeth texture. I don't know that. If I, I um, not sure what you're getting at for that texture, but. Um, I'm trying to think of another equivalent. Um, it, it, it is really a texture on its own, right? You can't, it's not as smooth as a resin. Um, it's, uh, 
it, it is definitely its own texture. Um, I'm just trying to think closer to a rock. I would think if you feel a rock in that that texture, I would say a smooth rock would be close uh, to what you're getting. Um, but that when you say that, I don't really see that. It, they're very smooth. So that's like a big, that's a two part one that glued together. It's supposed to be a big one. Sorry, here's, here's the finished piece with the, with the things underneath it. Um, um, yeah, so I, I, I don't, I hope, hope that answered that question. Uh, what scale is her, it, it is the 2530. I don't, uh, there is, he actually has several um, scales. So he just did um, like a city, small city scale, like for battle tech, I believe that is the scale that you can do it for. And he's done, he has done some um, hex bases as well. I think you can use for battle tech. Um, the bulk of his stuff though is 35 mil, 25, 35, like that, that D and D mil for sure is the main scale of this stuff. Um, though again, with, with, um, uh, stuff like this, you could obviously go 15 mil and it would just be a giant building, <laughs> obviously, or a giant pillar. Um, so uh, I hope that answers that question. Um, Reaper, uh, scale, uh, any specific grit? Of, um, yeah, so you can use multiple. Like I said, I've got 60 grit there. Um, and, and I just, I liked the bigger grit because I wasn't going through it. Um, and so I did like the fact that it was doing the job. Um, in general, most of the sanding uh, with first um, is done to um, level it. It's the more the bottoms of the sanding um, or potentially if I've glued something together. So say I do a brick wall, which I, one of the casts we did today was, oh no, yeah, I did, I did brick. I did brick. You'll see that if I, for some reason it became unlevel or, or there was some something weird about it, what I'll do is I'll actually sand level, say level one of brick is down. I can say in the top of level one brick, because I know there's gonna be a level two brick going over it all. And so it doesn't matter if I've taken some of the texture. And so that's where, so I have handy, handy dandy, a sanding block as well, which I will use um, for something like that. Um, so th those pieces, th this is, the sanding block is all with, within uh, reach for me because of how much sanding that I will do. Um, the, goal, the, the goal is you really don't have to do much sanding. Uh, it is a dusty work. So when you do start to sand, um, my girls who have to do the garbage in my house might hate my garbage because it, it will go poof, there's all this um, <laughs> dust. So which actually brings me to um, the safety, um, just so you know. Um, so um, you're not obviously supposed to inhale fine dust, if anything. Um, and so, um, you, but you, I don't think you should be, when you saw me doing it, I don't think you'll see many particulates in the air. I don't see it anywhere. Sanding, I actually find there's more particulates when you sand than when you pour and cast. Um, when, uh, so just, you just have to be conscious of depending on, on your level of uh, comfort. Um, but I, I don't wear a respirator for these pieces, though I think there is a suggestion that working with a very fine particulate can be sure. Um, so, um, like I said, I think I, I sanding, I worry more when I sand a lot. And so I try to make sure that I, that I don't, um, I may even stand in my shed with my, if I, depending on what I'm doing. But like I said, I try and avoid as much sanding as I can. And so I think the better you get at doing this hobby, you're making sure you're doing good scrapes, um, that you're trying to avoid as much sanding as possible. Okay. Um, anyway, so, um, I'm going to put that one aside. We just had a look at that one. Um, again, the goal was to get, I, I'm not going to glue that one yet together. I may come back and glue it, but um, I wanted to show you a few other ones. Um, so let me see. The um, If you look on their uh, Hearst, anything that says uh, accessory is pretty fun. Um, and th this is one of the, this is the um, in accessory mold. Um, and so it's got a stackable shelf which is kind of cool. So it's got one open side. Now, obviously with her stuff, you've always got one flat, untextured piece. And so that one's going to go to the back. Like that. And there's two levels to a shelf. And then I've got another one here. That's, that's a, from another one that gets you a narrower one. You can actually 
some use them in combination. Normally, I like the three. Oops, sorry, I'm a little off camera here. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, a bit. Um, I like the, having three of these. So it, could, it would take me to cast this one more time to get the extra piece to have three. Um, but same thing, the sky's the limit on, on what you, how you see with all your first pieces and what you're going to do. You've got a little bit of a railing for this. These are, these are for, um, uh, this wood can be used, I believe, for um, fireplace. So here it is. This is a different mold, but I've used that wood piece across here to have a ready-made fireplace. Um, one of the ways that I, I saw, or when I go to my cons and kind of sell this up, is if you don't have the, the money to, to go full door, door and forge, you don't have um, all the bling, but you've got at least um, a grid, map, uh, like a Chessex map or whatever down and using markers, well, um, you can qu quite easily, with a few things on the table, really add a little visual, as long as you've got you, your figs from Reaper um, as your characters, and then you've got your combat and you've got a few things in, in your room. And so that's the way I kind of saw and kind of, uh, kind of sell the pieces I make or how I think or what I make would be useful. There's so many rooms you go in and you can be in the end, you're exploring and there's a fireplace or there's, there's a, there's a hidden something up the fireplace if you check. Um, and so that's why I, I, I made this one and that, that's what these pieces are for. This is a, called a small brick mold. Uh, I believe this, uh, fire is actually in one of the pieces, so you'll see that. Um, you can the small brick molds you can make um, an, uh, 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 a blacksmith shop as well. Um, okay, keep going here with some of the other pieces on here. I'm just going to make. Oh yeah, so, so there is some of these these um, actually. So no, that that fireplace is in here. All these pieces are for this fireplace. I thought it was in another one. There's Sometimes there'll be similar type of pieces. So these are called small brick or um, mold. There's a half a table in here. So this one, same thing, it'll take you two, two casts to get this table, which is a nice size table. Um, I've got this, there's several different levels of tables. There's a round table. Do I have a round table close? Uh, I have it in my bar. Right. And these are really cool. So these are these are a, 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 a round curled step, um, so that fits in like this. Now you can see here, if you look. So there's there's there is your bean right there. So to me, that's a miscast, and and I okay, I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see it. There we go. Um, so you can see that there is your bean. It is is. Uh, the little micro bubbles. Now, depending on where it sits, you may the, the, you may be able to cover up some of them. It depends on how it sits, but this one looks like it won't be covered at all. It'll, it'll be very visible. And so um, that's probably me. Sometimes it'll be that I've done a little quick, done not a little, lot of vibration. I may think of my, uh, uh, my jet dry. Maybe I need to top it up a bit. It's been sitting for a bit. I need to recast it, make sure that it's kind of fresh. Um, and so, and, and that's the different textures you may find. Um, you'll have a different uh, effect. I found um, like the hydrostone when I first was really, really good. Um, and so that could be a little bit on me too. It, it was my ratio a little off. Um, it, there's a lot of things that you start getting good at to figure out how to get rid of those bubbles. Normally I don't see that many. And so I would just toss that piece, like I said, all these pieces, like I said, cost 50 cents. So that's probably, I don't know, two pennies. Um, but anyway, that will turn into this. Oh, I think let's not go to this. That can turn into a piece like this. So that's a, to me a gorgeous um, piece that will, you could put in, in drop into a, a, a tavern. If you did completely, let's go back out a little bit. If you go completely spiral, you can have something like that. This is a, a, a little tippy. I could probably put, put a few more of these reinforcements here. Um, just one more, I think it'll be very fine. Okay, this does stand pretty good. Um, but anyway, so that, that's what this piece is. So like I said, that's all coming from this mold that you can make those big pieces from just one purchase. And so that, that's the center wood piece 
that goes connects in here. And so you get two of those. You get a you get a bench. This is a great bench, a little bench. And you can see same, same thing. There's a little bit of uh, micro bubbles there. Uh, do you ever create your own molds? Um, yep, and, and we will get there. I'm going to talk about making my own molds. Um, and absolutely, um, Hearst shows you how. He, <laughs> he's amazing for really supporting the kind of the development of making your own molds and going that direction. Um, and that's what I basically done. You, what you'll find is, and so actually the, the one, well, I'll show you the, the one mold that I cast earlier was in white. That was my own mold that I made. And what it was, was it was a bookshelf. It's actually this bookshelf already done completely. So what I did is I made a three shelf bookshelf, made sure it was my nice quality. There was no micro bubbles. So I made sure my master was in really good shape. Um, and then I basically put on a mold and I made my own mold, uh, kind of Legoed up my frame. Lego is a great framing for, for this stuff, by the way. Um, and so I've got a bunch of Lego um, that no one's using anymore. Um, and um, I, then I used a glue gun to kind of seam it up. Um, um, now, remember, if you're going to seam it up, you're going to, you see how he's cut? He's actually cut these. I wonder if it's the same thing that there's something that he does in his process that he actually slices this. Um, but he said every, every mold is a little different. It looks like he hand cuts some of the pieces and, and that may be what he had in the mold. Um, but absolutely, um, right. So maybe a whole, Lego. so that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Everyone has Lego. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, so you will get the, um, the, depending on what, um, silicon you buy. I've had issues where it's seeping through the Lego and, it, and I haven't sealed it enough um, and, I, and I'm scooping it out and on top. <laughs> it's definitely been fun, uh, but eventually it starts to harden on you. And so that's one thing when you're looking at silicon is your dry time. Um, you want enough time for bubbles to come up. Uh, and so I, I, I've got a, a bunch here with me that I'm going to, I am going to get to and show you. Um, and I'll show you some of the errors that I've, uh, I've made uh, over the days. So that, um, that actual, the um, fireplace is actually a single piece that I cast, um, other than the fire. Uh, I'll, I'll show you in a minute. So we're, we're, we're jumping ahead. But um, absolutely, I'll, I'll show you some of the, Molestar was some of the companies that I used. So anyway, so this is all these pieces. Um, the other thing that's neat out of this, I'm trying to think. Um, so there is just a, a kind of a stair piece, so a straight stair, and so they stack. You're only getting one per, um, and so you'll need to stack it. Um, you can put this banister piece up alongside your stair, which looks nice, I believe. Uh, oh, and oh, sorry, and that's so that that's how I made the straight stair. So you've got this piece for straight, and then you've got the other piece for curl, and you use the sky's the limit for what you want to do. Um, so that's this piece. I don't cast this one as much. Um, I think once I, once I had my two stairs, um, once my bar was made and I made a set of stairs in there, um, I haven't needed this as much until I get to my next big project. And so some things will sit um, just because you may not need them as much. And so that one I would say would be one of the ones that you need less. Um, this banister piece, I had to cast this a bunch of times to get this banister piece. Um, and, and then I used it, and then once I was done, um, same thing, the, 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 the mold you may not use as much. Um, but the other piece is that what we'll do, I'll do, I'll lay this out, and I will say, okay, I just need this banister, which is right here. And so I'll, uh, I'll do, I would classically pour this, which is a shelf piece, which high demand. Um, I, um, on my cons, I could, I could paint that up, sell it for five bucks, and away it go, and, 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 and I'd have tons of those. So I do the shelf pieces, I would do the banister piece when I need it. And then, and then nothing else really on this one because I didn't need it. Or I would do the bench. The bench was another really good one to go right here. So you can pick and choose which pieces you want to do when you cast it. So you can really stretch out um, that. You don't obviously have to recast the whole thing. So that would be that. So there, there are two um, pre-done molds that I did yesterday. Any questions that I've missed so far?
Uh, sounds like a mess. Yes, yeah, so, sorry, that was probably about my casting. So let me just make sure I, I've um, got, I, I did have a little bit of an agenda I wanted to make sure. So casting, the pouring I've done, gluing. Um, oh, so uh, drying. Um, you, there will be some talk about um, uh, dehydrator. I have a dehydrator. Um, I have it going right away. Um, some people say they put it on their pieces on in an oven. Um, it, it, it comes down to how quickly you want it to dry. How um, I haven't really seen a negative effect by putting it together a little too early, as long as I'm not painting it yet. And so gluing that piece that I just did, even though I cast it yesterday, I hadn't done any drying. It feels a little cool to touch, and that's usually the indication that it's still got some water in it. Um, but um, I'll put this up alongside the ones that come out, and you'll just see the difference in texture, and you'll, and you'll see that, uh, the color difference in it as it's drying out. Its PSI is not at 18,000 until it's completely dry, and so it may take um, on its own, without any prompting, a few uh, a, a day, a few days to get to its absolutely hardest. But you absolutely can work with it. As someone mentioned, that they liked a softer piece because they wanted to work with it. Well, right now, this is not at its high level of PSI. And so, like I said, you saw that I could scrape it fairly easily. It's not that hard. Uh, I, I, I have never had any issues doing some work with it. Um, absolutely, you can. Uh, another knife. Where's my? Sorry, I'm just getting my little saw. I don't have my handle for my saw. I noticed this the other day. Um, but this piece, just, just a, so a piece like this. Sorry, I, I don't want to scrape my desk. My cutting board isn't in. So there's one, two, three, four. I'm, I'm through. Okay, oh, there you go. So there, it, it took me four, and I got a good cut, and I snapped it. Um, and so depending on what you're going to do with the piece, um, but that was still a lot of pressure, but um, I, I think it's very workable. Um, uh, and so, um, yeah, it, it, like I said, I, I haven't had a problem with drying. I do dehydrate. I had a dehydrator. It, I, I went through one completely and it eventually died and I bought another one. Um, I like the, actually the stackability where you can put different molds on different levels as I'm, I'm and I'm looking for something. <laughs> so there will always be some of that stuff on the go at my house. Um, sorry, I lost my uh, my window. No questions. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, gluing, just cutting, standing. Um, I think I've, uh, any questions about them? Um, oh, my angle. Oh, yeah, my angle. Uh, someone, someone cut that before I did. Uh, my angle is okay now, I believe. Um, Okay, um, any questions so far about um, cutting or sanding or anything like that? My next point is what I've done. How, how are we doing for time? We're already in an hour. Holy. All right. Um, <laughs> that's gone fast. And we got eight minutes to the other, the other mold. Um, so um, what I think I'm going to get to, I was going to go show you some standard pieces. I've got only a half an hour. So uh, let's see what pieces. Okay. First, one of the, I think one of the first molds that he did is the, oh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Oops, by the way, is the uh, wizard's tower. Um, the wood is extra. So the wood is not part of it. And so what you're getting obviously is the parapet pieces, which are great. You're getting a, uh, this type of brick was the first brick that I bought, and you can do tons. I think of a kind of a dwarven worked, um, they end up being lighter than metal, than heavier than metal. Lighter than metal. Um, oh, that's, um, yeah, a slightly lighter, light, lighter than metal. Slightly. It's a heavy piece. This is definitely, if you've ever picked up dwarven forge, I think there's a fairly close equivalent, but this is heavy. This is a, a heavy piece. Um, and I think that's part of the appeal to it. it it's a heavy piece. Um, and so when you're making it um, that weight, uh, you, you ever see uh, when you buy a board game, you, you see how, how heavy it is. That's a, kind of a true value. Well, that, these pieces are, are heavy. Um, anyway, so <clears throat> this is a great first piece. 
to start with because of some of the nice um, things that you get. It does give you enough um, bricks per pass to make anything really you want. Um, there is a piece, the, a supplemental one that is just purely bricks. And so that you would, could supplement this if you're going to make a castle, which I don't know if you can see my background there, um, but I've got a castle piece that I did. Um, and I was basically using, there's a, a, a dragon inn, there was the wizard tower, which I got both and the um, other piece. I was basically getting every mold I had that had these bricks and I was casting it every time. So I had a mass number of bricks because I am limited to the, the number of that, that kind of 35, about an hour timeline uh, for how many I had to get the brick count. So something like this, you buy the single mold, it will say cast it 20 times. And then you'll have all the pieces you need to build this. The nice thing about this, the plans are on his website. So this comes apart, which is kind of nice. And so he tells you what pieces to not glue so that you can do that. And so you can see inside. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then basically, yeah. So that's the first piece I did. Um, <clears throat> the first piece I would say that I made, um, you, you know, with Lego, you got the four, the, the eight pieces, the very standard Lego piece. And there's that one piece that's one shy that no one ever uses. Well, <clears throat> same thing. There was all these three pieces. So that the six pip pieces, um, and I had so many of them after casting that, that I decided to make, um, uh, a pencil holder with all my extras and then I just kind of added a couple of the other pieces there um, and then I put it on cork so this is dollar store cork which I do a lot of my stuff on that which you get really cheap um, and kind of away we go so just another side piece on kind of what you can do with with Hearst stuff all right let me go back my keep my agenda keeps knocking my uh, question and answers out of the way um, <clears throat> okay um, Let's see, other finished pieces. I, I think I posted, <clears throat> I believe I posted on um, the Discord, the, this was part of the uh, Ruin Tower, Ruin Tower, I believe it's called. Um, and nice, gorgeous pieces, lots of, of nice kind of, the kind of the little the, the ruins on these. Um, so this talks also about that these pieces that he talks about, that Hurst shows you how to distress the pieces or, or break them. Um, and so where is my flyers? And so he'll talk about, uh, let's see, where's that piece I just cut? It's a direct piece, but basically, you're basically pinching something off the end. And, and, and having kind of a rough edge and it gives that ruin effect. And so that's what's happening here on the end of this, um, is that you've got a piece that's normally would have been a nice brand new piece, you're pinching it out. And then you get nice, lots of nice little rock pieces as well when you're done. This one obviously has, um, this has got wood texture to it. So you could have a, say a, a, a burnt out um, a place or, or on the ground of your fig um, and have these pieces of wood texture showing. And so I think that that's kind of a, a kind of a side note. Once you start having a lot of these pieces, you start to think of how you can supplement your um, your figs and your bases with all these plaster pieces that you, that you now have. Um, so let me show you a few others. One of the other things with just standard bricks. Um, so as I mentioned before, when we if you've got just a grid, you don't have lots. Um, just making this. You tell, tell me if you, if you can you can visualize uh, my ruin my, my my room right now <clears throat> with with what I've done um, and and, and it's just how quickly um, that battle has now turned uh, very much more visual um, if this is on a grid and it didn't take much this is one cast um, and these are the bricks um, and so uh, these I, I sell these quite a bit as well when I go to the cons and people just like them. It's a good starting point just to have a uh, have some corners to room. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's keep going. Um, you do yeah. have a really good question, actually. I do. Where is it? My question and answer? Oh, yes. I, I keep missing them. I think it's all right. Sorry. 
let's, uh, sorry about that. I was missing them. Uh, does it now feel correct? Um, what scale? I did that one. Jerry, do you ever create normal? Yeah, we're going to get that right now. Just standard food hydrator. Yes. Uh, you know, um, I just turn it on for a long time and I come back to it and it's like, and it's hot and I go, ah, these are done. You can actually tell by color. You can actually just see the difference. You can see that they've got, they get really bright white. Um, like I said, you'll, you'll see the difference in a minute. Um, and so I'm just looking for that whiteness. I generally will, I'll turn on my dehydrator. Um, I don't leave it going overnight. I turn it off when I go to bed and, and that's usually enough. For me. It's just, it just, it's just speeding along that process. Usually I'm in the middle of a project. And so I like the dehydrator going and speeding up um, the, uh, uh, the dry times. Um, did that, was that the question I was missing? Uh, no, was an open question. Which one are we missing here? It's the open tab. Uh, open tab. Like, oh, open. oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, that's why I'm not jumping between. Uh, do you paint? Uh, to, to paint, do you use acrylic primer or paint? Okay. Um, good question. That was one of the things I wanted to get to. This stuff absorbs paint. It is amazing um, uh, paint. Um, so I think that's why I like working with it a lot is that it's not actually made out of, uh, out of something that, that works well with water um, and it sticks. It absolutely sticks. I even find sometimes when I black prime that it almost sucks it into it a little bit too much. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a black primer guy. That's why I did my wood texture, how I got into my wood texturing that I black prime everything. This stuff I, I classically will use a, a black uh, craft paint just because there's so much of it. Um, I didn't, if I used kind of a, 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 a dropper bottle from Reaper, it would take forever. Oh, there's our, there's my timer for my our first cast. So I'll get to that in just a second. Um, so absolutely, it loves paint. Absolutely, I have no issues. Don't have to prime it. You can paint, paint directly on it. So these, these are uh, a, a straight yellow. I didn't black prime these just because if I want a brighter color, I will not go black. And I know I don't need black coming out of these pieces. Um, same with the, sand, the sandbags. They've got a sandbag mold. And so I've done a few sandbag molds. They are for, for military side, but I go, you know what, in, in terms of, I, I like these sandbags a little better in terms of on a dock side. Um, I just think they're a little small and I like them. So I, I use those as well. And I did this with green and didn't, uh, it didn't need any, any prime at all. So, so yeah, and I, and I find it doesn't chip off unless you drop it. And same thing when I drop it, I find just a hard edge. If it hits something really hard, it will chip, but it will very likely not break. Um, okay, I think I got them all now. Sorry, I guess I'll keep watching that open. That's what I'm missing. I've got it on answer. Should I keep it on open? Is that better? Yeah. No, yeah. no questions. Okay, that's why. I think I wasn't having it on open. Okay. Okay, some other pieces. So, um, one, did the one we did? Yeah, the one we did actually has this, 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 um, in, the inch crate. It's a very popular crate. I like it. And so I, this is all glued together. And it's just a, a kind of fun piece to have. What I like about these pieces is that a fig can stand on them. So it, it definitely, you put something in, the, in a combat for D&D, um, the fighters, the rogues, they're going to go in there and they're going to hide or they're going to use that height advantage. And so I like that you can jump these up. And so these inch ones are great. Um, it's originally in the mold, which we're going to decast and make you see it's hollow. I recast this solid, solid pieces, just because I, I find it better. It was the one piece that breaks is the top cover um, because it was hollow and I could do this and it would crack. So I, I kind of fixed that by making these solid pieces and I had to do that on my own by making it my own. And as you'll notice this, this fake, so this is the uh, Jason Weeby uh, special edition one that was out. Um, I, I um, actually put a first base here. And so I'll show you that as well. That's part of the things that we, um, uh, that I've done um, with first. So I'll do, I'll do that next. Some fun things to think about. So I made a mold. Where is it? My mold right here. So this is um, a mold. And what I've done was use, this is from another mold. It, and it, it fills together and makes a giant floor piece. Uh, oh, I don't have one handy. Or it's all, all under something. 
Um, and then what I did is I actually undercast it. So this is an undercast piece purposely, so I don't have a lot of work to, uh, to work with, but this can be quickly popped away for rocks. You can cut off pieces that can give you a multi. Look at look how easy that comes off. Can you, can you see the usage of this on a base? <laughs> and so with what I did with that is I made a nice round piece as my master, then I cast it. And so this comes out um, and then I will put that in when I, and so this one's got one wood piece and one stone piece. And I cast that every time I'm basically casting, I'm adding those two. These are two that kind of didn't really work out well. Um, but these two pieces pop out and that lets me do it on, on the inset bases, put those in there and I, I'm ready to pin. And so what I, I'm trying to work up for now is my pirate ship that's coming. All the pieces that I think should have a wood base because they're going to be on my pirate ship. So every pirate I have, I'm rebasing to a wood base. So it's going to look really cool when it's all done. Um, and I've got all these pieces that actually have wood bases as well. That's a little, a lot of extra work. I was mulling, I could do a, a thing on pinning, a, te a teach on pinning because I do a lot of it as well. Uh, so that's that. This one, I decided one day just to sand it down to see what it looks like. And it actually turned out really well. Um, and my gnomes, I just did these two gnomes um, from the Reaper Christmas gnomes. Um, and the, the sanded down version, I thought it looked really well. It looked more like a, 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 a not an outside street, um, 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 cobble, but an inside worn um, workbench area. So that worked out really, really well. Sorry, I can't see that that well. Um, so anyway, that's that's the same piece that I've sanded down. So it was kind of an aha moment, and that really just happened in December that I sanded it down and went, oh man, it looks pretty good. Uh, and it was something that I hadn't thought of. And so there's always kind of different things you're thinking of with first stuff that you, or any, any of the stuff that you've got in plaster, that you may use in a different way. Um, and I've had that mold for probably over two or three years and I didn't think about it. And I didn't think about the under pouring uh, until I just thought about it one day. I went, you know, what happens if I could just get the texture out of it and not get this thickness that I didn't really want. And so this has been a, a, very, a very big piece um, to some of my bases that I've done. So, so this is a, there's an old Royal Partha Frost Giant, and that's the same stone piece. I'm still working on this piece. I, um, it's an old paint job that I decided to, to redo. Did a little bit of, um, of uh, resin in there as well. Um, that, that same line, there's the Storm Giant, and same thing. I used that in the middle of his legs. So the bigger piece, obviously, you've got a little bit more room to work with, but that definitely is part of my kind of non-standard use of her start would be that kind of basing stuff when you've got some big bases. Um, let me just make sure I'm good for time. We're only at 12 minutes. Um, let me go quickly to some other stuff. Just to, um, so this is a mix. So there I've done bookcases. Um, I believe the books, um, I think they're another company, um, but Hearst does have one that does books. And so there's one I'm just building some bookcases and that, that's all Hearst stuff and that's bookcase as well. And so you can obviously, they're each individual pieces and you can just do the order you want. I'm just starting to paint it up. Um, and then I'm deciding where that's going to go. Uh, you've seen the uh, beholder. So I've covered up that base with a bunch of first pieces and different pieces just to, to make it look cool. Um, another thing that I've done. Um, let's see what else. Okay. Um, one classic um sorry there's floor tile there's different floor tiles so that is um i've had to cast this a bunch like twice to get this many i've used that cork on the bottom and i've got a, about i don't know 20 30 of these and i use them for my floor tile instead of using um a grid pattern on a chessex kit grid grid i have my own floor tiles and it makes it look more like a dungeon um i'm gonna go i'm gonna go in a little bit enough of this because i don't really um, and so what I decided after a while that it was worth making my own mold of that. So same thing, I glued it together, made my mold, probably made it a little thicker than I needed to. Um, it's not the exact, I, Bruce doesn't say what exactly, which kind he uses. So I haven't found the exact mold that he, um, 
of silicon he uses. Um, but I've tried different ones. I probably uh, could find out over time which one it is. But these ones, this is quite nice, and I haven't had any problem with any of the ones. Um, they're just basically different. Uh, Molestar was one of the ones I've used. I think Molestar, and they're just basically looking at different drawing times, different setting times. Um, and so it just comes down to what you want to use. Um, I think, I, and I've used a crystal one as well for some. Okay, how are we doing for time here? Um, 20, 10 minutes. I, I didn't get anywhere near but some of the other molds. So this is the biggest mold I made. So he, uh, when I got to cobble stuff, so cobblestone is these. Um, I made this and then I decided I'd actually built there. It's right there. And I, so that I can do walls very quickly. And so um, same thing, it's one thing that I was finding people were asking me when I was going to my con, do I have any walls? Um, and so I made this that I can basically fill that cup and, uh, and it'll basically uh, fill this and I have already made these walls very quickly. Um, it was obviously with a lot of silicon to do that, but um, definitely that sped up the process for me. <clears throat> Here's my error. So this is the, as I mentioned, the, um, um, sorry, where was it? This piece, yeah, so the, the fireplace is separate. But if you'll notice right here, there's a bubble. So that is your, you, you gotta watch out for. There's a bubble here too. But you know what? It didn't really affect my end result. Um, um, it, 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 they do both go through. And so I could have my plaster going through, but I find with the pressure of it, it actually is in place and it's fine. Um, and so, but that's what you're worried about. And that's why you talk about when you're at making silicone molds, you talk about vacuum chambers and any way to get this up. And so you definitely want to find something that, um, you, it'll, it'll talk about bubble free, uh, things like that. You want something that, that you're not gonna need bubbles in your molds because that'll completely wreck your mold. And this stuff is more expensive. I did bring this as uh, pricing for this stuff, but absolutely much more expensive. <coughs> um, um, so you just, um, like I said, but you basically look for some sculpt, uh, probably sculpting um, companies around you. They'll have, they potentially have the dental plaster. They'll have the silicones um, and all those things that, that they can hopefully advise you on. Um, so and that piece, See what else do I have to show you? Um, so this be same thing, cork on the back. And this is a different mold as well. So this mold comes with this. Um, sorry, it's a little dusty. I've been sitting on this one. And what I did is actually I poured, I, so I taped up the side and I actually poured silicon, not silicon, sorry, I poured plaster on the side to thicken this up. The one thing you'll know that, that um, you can't just have cork loose, so you needed some support piece. And so this, this piece can go on the end of this, and I have kind of a, a little rickety bridge. Bigger piece, same thing. But a whole full, that, there's the full pieces of cork that you buy. They're that size normally. And I did a big, full, big cavern piece. See, those are, again, that's, that's outside the box that they're thinking. Um, <clears throat> same thing, um, doing, so this is from the Egyptian one. We've got a mummy here, and then I've made you know, the little crick side things. That wasn't really part of the plan, but it's been pretty fun. Um, <clears throat> my daughter made this, same thing, it's the cobble. One of the pieces actually has a little, that has four holes in it that you can put um, uh, toothpicks in, and uh, just a nice little room piece um, when you're not, when you don't want a giant, giant. That's the one thing I find is I started making some giant pieces, I'm running out of space. So then I was definitely leaning towards those pieces that were a little smaller. So I did do the bridge, went with a kind of a peachy, um, I decided something different, um, but the bridge is a fun piece as well. That's all one, uh, that's all one, you get that all from one mold. It's a bridge mold and there's different bridge molds. Uh, what else? Okay, then here, here's my, Check. So this is kind of my scene. So what I've been doing, just because I've been doing Instagram a bit more and, and showing off some of my paintwork and stuff, is that I made an open room that I could take photos on. Now all this is loose. So these are pretty much everything in here is first stuff from 
all this is. Uh, the, some of the bottles may not be, um, but to to uh, Reaper Figs um, window as well, all, all that, and there's, there is glass in the window, it's just plastic. I can't tip this up, it's all gonna fall on me. Um, but this has been kind of fun having these little rooms that I can um, put my figs in and, and do a little display. There's the Egyptian one, same thing. There's a mummy in there. All this is all loose still, other than the guys on the wall, I glued them in there. This has got, this guy's loose. Still working on this. I'm actually wanting to do the color work on this, try to get all my primary colors. But so that'll be another neat piece to have new figs there. Along that Egyptian line, one of the, the molds actually does a, a whole obelisk, which is um, any questions so far? We are getting close to, we got five minutes. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, let me see here. Um, I showed some standard stuff. I showed some non-standard stuff. The only thing I think my goal, one of the things was starting point. Um, so what I would say, you want the accessory side or do you want to build something, right? Those are the two big pieces. Um, what are you looking for? And so the accessory molds. Oh, sorry, we didn't really deep mold this. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this over quickly. This is the one we cast. So while while we're finishing up, I'm gonna demold this, and I'll show you. This is the one that I think is probably one of the best ones. So it's got that half big cast piece. It's got a half a fountain. Um, it's got a fire pit or like a campfire. Um, it's got a great chest, so this chest is great. You can see that how clean that is. It's, it's a really good mold. It's got, let me move these away, got the, the um, sacks or kind of flower sacks, and got a, it's got a loose one as well. It's got another fountain piece, got another crate. So those could, these are really core great crates. Got a crystal ball, which I've done. This is the stuff that I bring to cons. Most of this stuff is in this is in this mold that we're doing, we're, we're taking I'm taking apart. And so you can see lots of cool little pieces that I have ready to go. I I, me, I made my own kind of um, there's normally supposed to be water in some of these, and I made um, kind of fruit in a fruit barrel. Um, so that's that. Um, what are they? So this is the piece that big the, the inch crate. So there's the crate. See, it's hollow, which is kind of neat if you want it. And there's the lid, fairly narrow. It didn't come out great. You could still glue that in there. It would be it'll be a crack. Um, you could show it distressed. Um, barrels. There's a there's the, there's the empty barrel. I usually fill them with a little bit of clear resin look like water, little gems. Another barrel that's a full barrel with a top. All right, there's a broken barrel purposely. Crystals, I try to use, I was trying to paint one of these today on Aaron, Aaron Hartwell's uh, crystal one. So there's three crystals. You can actually glue these crystals together and then sand them. And I've actually made some pieces where they're um, kind of an um, outcropping of these different crystals. There's three different sizes. So that's kind of neat. How much are we doing for time? I'm still two minutes. I haven't missed any questions, I don't think. This is cool. This, I'll show you this as well. I like, like I said, this mold is just great for what this, so this is, it can be a, a stone door. Oh, I'm in my long order here. Stone door. If you wanted a stone door, okay. But now I'll show you what I used. I've got four of them here. I have fun making these. Is so you make a a fountain. Here, let me, let me zoom in a little bit on this. There we go. Fishing line for lot for water. And then a little bit of hard as nails, I think, is what I use. There's another version 
which uh, the Egyptian sign, but the bottom one is in this set. There's a different one. Same thing, I used the other. You got two fountain things. That's from another set as well. And that's all, that piece is also from another set. But it gave me four options, but I like that that stone door background. Oh, sorry. You haven't seen those. So that stone uh, door background. Um, what else is in here? That's the base to that piece that holds that up. It goes there. You've got a half an iron door, kind of cool. You've got that 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 piece of that, that that piece is in here as well. You can make a kind of a stand. That we've got a little oh, a log, kind of nice. And what I do also for these logs, which you've done before, is you sand these logs. So you, you've got this piece, and you got one bad side, right? So what you want to do. You're not seeing me, but I'm just going to three streaks across that. <clears throat> and now I've got a flat piece. And what you can do is you, I could easily put this in a terrain piece like this. And I, I probably on a higher angle, um, but you've got an old kind of fallen piece to dissolve wood. And so you can walk, very easy to work with, with that on, on paper. It's kind of nice. Or with sand, a little bit of sandpaper, you've got a little a wooden kind of um, path. You've got the chest, which is great. That chest comes out really, really nice. You've got fire. So this is the top fire. It actually fits on this fire pit. So if you want an old fire or you want a, an actually active fire, that fits in there and you can paint it. You also got another stack that goes with your stack pieces, an open stack, got another open stack. Sorry to interrupt. You got one question, and okay. yeah, you got. You're technically past time, but I'm gonna allow for a couple minutes if you want. Uh, all right, we know we have nothing right after, but I won't keep people too long. I, I pretty much covered everything I wanted to. I, Ninety minutes flew by. <laughs> well, you got one question if you want to answer it. Okay. Um, how do you have your mold stored? Okay, so I know on Hearst, um, he says don't. Um, store them any length of time. Like you want them flat. This is, I guess, kind of semi-liquid, they call it. Um, but you know what? I've had no issue. I do have it in a kind of a plastic drawer system. I do make sure that they, they stay level. Um, but he, he talks about them sticking together, um, but I've never had any issues at all. And I've, like I said, I've had some of them for 18 years. I've had no issue at all with anything. And I'm, I'm in a fairly humid but colder, obviously, <clears throat> temperature. So maybe if you're in a hot climb, there may be more issues. Actually, a Hobby Lobby or a kind of Michael's here, they've actually got a plastic bin. And within the bin are these plastic holders. And they actually fit these perfect. And so if you really wanted to keep them separate, they talk about on the Hearst uh, website that using baby powder. I've never have actually used baby powder because I've had no problems with sticking. I've had no problem. I've only... I think I've had one piece of a mold chip off because like if you start using resin in this stuff you're a lot it's a lot harder on your your mold and you could they could deteriorate um, but I've had absolutely no issues and so I've just stored them stacked I don't purposely necessarily clean them greatly so I'm leaving a little bit of that powder or a little bit of that dust of a little bit of residue that kind of makes it feel like a little sandy and so maybe that's part of what it is that's keeping it from sticking together is that I don't do a great job when I'm done. Every time just prior to using it, that's when I'm doing a really good clean um, so that I'm, I'm getting a good a mold, a, a, a nice clean um, um, mold uh, just when it's pouring and making sure nothing's being left in like this bucket. Sometimes it cracks and there's a little piece that's stuck inside that mold and I have to, I have to take a really good look, make sure that there's not a piece in there. Sometimes your new mold may, uh, your new pour will actually stick to that old piece and you won't even see it. Um, but, uh, and this, I just did it. I did the exact same piece. You get to learn that you need to sometimes pop them up from underneath. Um, Cause I, I just cracked that edge of this little cauldron. It's a nice cauldron, but I, I have cracked so many edges and I've learned some pressure from underneath of your mold to pop them out put less pressure, but you really do learn each of the molds that you buy and which pieces are a little more tricky to get out. This one was fairly, um, uh, the only issue was that one cauldron. So, 
Okay, did I, I think I answered all my, um, what is the ratio to direct dry to water? Um, on the Hearst website, it talks about it, but it is three drops for every two ounces of water. So not much. I believe I just, and I, I didn't worry, I thought, I, I, I believe it didn't hurt to have more. So I just kind of squeeze, squeeze in this. Um, and, and maybe that's not enough. I don't think this is, when I have this full, this is 800, 800 mils. So I think I'm, I do a little bit more, but I'm, I'm just wondering the, the longevity of it in water. And I, I may need to just try it again and just that may help. Any other questions? I, I will pop into the Discord. I know under the um, the teachers, there is a little um, uh, chat channel down there. So I can pop in there if anyone has any questions. Um, and, and if you uh, hit me up anytime, I think on my, uh, I can, if you go quickly and do the, uh, it's all about the wood, my contact information's there um, and all my kind of socials. And so you could absolutely hit me up with a question if you had a question after. So I think we're gonna call it then. Um, it is 6.35. Sorry, I, I took you five minutes over. I, I had no clue that I would actually keep you going. I, did, I, I thought I was going to show you more stuff, um, but I've definitely run out of time. Um, so, we have, but thanks everyone. Thanks for the questions. Um, like I said, hit me up anytime. I, I love uh, her stuff and I love how it really it, um, works well with all the, the, the miniatures that we paint. Um, so, uh, uh, all the best, and hopefully I'll see you guys around, and hopefully I'll see you maybe at ReaperCon this year. The goal would be to go this year. And thank you. Right. Great. Okay. Thanks, Maxon. Have a great evening, everyone. Ciao. <laughs>